I had a very awkward hand against uh, Gas Trader a few months ago. So maybe like five months ago or so. To my direct left sits an account called Dan Bilzerian. And I'm like, wait, is this a troll? You know, is this just some random red calling himself Dan Bilzerian? That's what I thought. And a second later, Bill Perkins joins to my direct right. All right, so ace and suited under the gun open raise, easy open raise. Even ace 10 off suit is an open raise. We've got a call here by Nick. In a non-anti game, there's a lot more three betting and folding going on, but with, when there's more money around, you can play more hands. Bill Perkins has a bittersweet hand. On the one hand, he has an ace, you know, which is the best card you can get. On the other hand, the second card is a six, so his hand is disconnected, you're not suited, you're dominated, so that's a bit troublesome. If you're going to see bet multi-way, this is not an unreasonable board to be see betting in true teller spot. He has to assume Nick doesn't have queens. He might have ace queen, but unlikely as ace queen when there's uh, two aces and a queen on board and you've got an ace. So I assume true teller is just going to be pounding it here. He's going to be bombing it. No chance uh, Bill Perkins folds right now. True teller is clearly hoping uh, per Perkins has an ace so he can get for, uh, get the whole stack. Um, and yeah, this is a huge mistake by Bill Parkin. So this play makes no sense, right? If uh, True Teller is bluffing, let him bluff. If he has it, he'll never, I mean, he'll never fold. So this play makes very little sense. I think Bill Parkins is a genuinely good poker player nowadays, but that was a big mistake. And the thing is, we all make big mistakes, right? I, I've seen, I mean, I've seen Victor make a small mistake. I've seen True Teller make some small mistakes, a pretty moderate mistake. I've seen Adamo make a bunch of mistakes already. And, you know, a bit too easy. And Nick did one thing that, you know, was okay. I didn't agree with it. But, you know, of course, we can all have different opinions. So everybody at this table makes mistakes. But this was a pretty big one. And so let's see what uh, Gastrier now does going after it. King 6-5 is a good board for Gastrier. I mean, he's going to have Ace King, but Victor won't. And he goes for a very small bet. Look at this pile play. Gas Trader loves the quarter and fifth pot buttons. Victor's more likely to have two pair of set here, so I think he's bound to lead out a decent amount here. His bluffs could be stuff like ace high floats and stuff like that. Maybe he turns something like ace five suited into a bluff. Gas Trader's not wrapping a whole lot if he, if he bets here, you know? What is he be betting? Like eight six suited or pocket eights or maybe he rivered six seven or something? Maybe he just trapped the pocket king. So, yeah, this is kind of suspicious, right? What is he wrapping here? Show it, show it. He always shows the bluff. Okay, so he was not bluffing. Okay, interesting. I had a very awkward hand against uh, Gas Trader a few months ago. So, maybe like five months ago or so, I was open sitting 100, 200. And to my direct left sits an account called Dan Bilzerian with Dan Bilzerian's face. And I'm like, Wait, is this a troll? You know, is this just some random red calling himself Dan Bilzerian? That's what I thought. Whatever, we play heads up. And a second later, Bill Perkins joins to my direct right. And so then I thought, wait, these guys are buddies. So, whoa, this is one of the best games of, uh, I've played this year, right? 100, 200 with two spots. And there were a couple of guys who joined who weren't exactly fantastic. So I'm like, wow, this is an amazing uh, spot. And so Perkins raised, th this was like five minutes into the session. Perkins bought in for 200 big blinds for $40,000. So I bought in for $40,000 as well. And Del Mozarian, I think, had the same. So Bill Perkins opens under the gun, and I have pocket queens, and I three bet him. And Perkins snap calls. And the flop was queen eight three rainbow. So jackpot, right? I see about one third. Uh, um, sorry, flush draw. Queen eight three or queen eight deuce. Let's call it queen eight three flush draw. I see about one third. Perkins calls. Great. Turn was the 10 of clubs, bring the flush. I ch uh, he checks, I bet something like half pot. So I bet like $2,700 or something, or maybe I bet something that's smaller than half pot. And he snap shoves all in for 35,000. Snap shoves, like one second shove. So I bet like 2,700 uh, and he shoved like 35, 36, 37,000, right? And I'm like, oh man, I, I just looked at a, a bunch of Bill Perkins hands the other day. And anytime he made this type of, had this type of line, he just had it anytime. And I was like, oh, it's five minutes into the session. 
you know, usually Bill Parkins, once he loses, whatever, he gets, you know, he gets stuck a little bit. He starts gambling. But five minutes into the session, he always plays nitty. And I actually decided, man, I'm supposed to just fold this. I know I should just fold. And I end up folding. And I'm like, you know, obviously I don't show my hand because that would be embarrassing. I don't show my hand. And Bill Parkins shows um, King Jack offsuit with one club. And I got owned. So I actually fold the top set against him. Uh, 200 big blunts deep at 20k. So I was happy with my fold, even though obviously uh, it looks kind of stupid, right? He probably just thought I folded, I don't know, king queen or something. Even though I folded such a strong hand, I believe my play was good. You know, if I if I had to do it all over again, would I call? I'd be more likely to call, right? Because he showed a crazy hand. But um, yeah, I, I was happy with my fold. I normally wouldn't fold there, but I've pl I've played these guys so much over the years. I know their game so well. And this time I didn't. This time I blatantly was wrong. And it's and it happens. But yeah, shout out to Bill Perkins. He uh, he definitely wrecked me in that spot. So obviously in game I said, oh, I have pocket fives or something. But no, I had top set. I really like my fold. I am happy I made the fold with the information I had. But the thing is, not your reads are not always right. My reads are often right, more often than they should be. But not always. And, you know, that was just the wrong spot to be wrong in. Is it a good fold to get with a, against a reg? I mean, no reg will ever make that take that line. So yeah, knit's gonna knit. Exactly, horse. I'm not exactly a knit, but at the same time, I, I'm happy with my fold. Pretty big three bet here by Nick. Jack, Jack, Deuce is a pretty dry board. Nick is gonna have a lot of jacks. I would say Gastrid is more likely to have deuces than Nick, but he should definitely not have very many of them. Gas Trader snap calls right here. This is an important card for both players. I mean, especially Gas Trader could easily have had like sevens. I can see both guys having a decent amount of flushes here. So very interested in seeing what Nick would bet here. Wow, that's a great card for Nick. If Nick had a hand like nines through aces, he's not significantly more happy, given the fact that sevens and deuces no longer beat him and flushes no longer beat him. So Gastrio goes for a half pot bet, not really a, a great bet size. He's trying to represent a hand like pocket nines or something. Let's see if Nick takes the, the over cards and bluff raises, trying to rep the over pair, or maybe even has an over pair. Gastrio should be betting significantly smaller than he did. I don't really like this raise size by Nick too much. Uh, I think he should be going larger. I'm, my prediction is that Nick has pocket tens. We'll never know. I mean, his play doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. He's really not, uh, he's not leveraging his range advantage nearly enough. And again, he does call MP versus under the gun. Nick's a great player, by the way. I've played him uh, not so much, but decent amount, and he's a fantastic player. Wow, look at this, the Stefan play. Gastrier going for the multi-way small lead. Nick could have a hand like pocket fives here. I could maybe see him have a hand like pocket eights. I, again, I don't like this raise size. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Gastrier does snap call here. So he could have a hand like six, seven. He could have the nuts. More likely has something like an eight or a five. Three, four is possible as well. And Nick bets big here. Yeah. Okay. Quite the loose open raise here with the eight, nine offsuit in the cutoff. And... That's what you get sometimes, right? I'm not saying it's a terrible open race, but it's definitely pretty loose. So True Teller ends up calling you with the ace eight and he loves this board as well. You could end up chunking back here with a medium eight sometimes if you wanted to. Michael's RNG hit low, which is uh, pretty lucky for him given that True Teller has such a strong hand. True Teller can do whatever f he wants here. He can go he can go with this bet size all the way down to 1500. He can do whatever he wants. Adam was not going to be able to really do much about it easy call here. Yes, you could be dead. And yes, you are blocking some hands like 9-7, 9-5, 10-9, but you just got to call here. Truth Teller does not need to fear this queen very much. It's not as if Adam was calling king queen on turn versus a big over bet. Easy value bet. 20,000. 20,000. In theory, you would probably have to call this hand. Let's see if Adamo can make the tough fold, thinking he blocks a lot of bluffs. True Teller wins a nice one. You see how good True Teller is, right? He doesn't just think, oh, the, the queen is an over card, a bad card. He realizes that the way the handle was played, a queen is just quite an unlikely card. Easy open raise. 
I'd almost go to three with here hundred percent. I assume a Nick will just call this hand, especially being so deep. If he were like 40, 50 big blinds deep, you could see him shoving here. Easy call. It is a very large race size to be fair, which means you have to adjust your range quite a bit, but nines I see as a hand to just be calling. Adamo's got a tough spot here, right? Because on the one hand, this hand does pretty well on this board, but your range doesn't do very well. I mean, we could see Nick having sets here, a couple of two pairs, some sets, uh, sorry, some sets, some two pairs, some straights, some big draws. So you could maybe decide to check this hand if you wanted to. Adamo does end up checking. Nick's in a tough spot. On the one hand, his hand is pretty valuable. On the other hand, he does not really want to get a uh, check raise, right? If he bets 9,000, said it before he did it, and now he gets check raised at 35, nice and tough. Okay, so far cool play. Now Nick's another tough spot because again, he does not want to get check raised, right? He doesn't want to get check raised, but at the same time, there's a little bit of value to be had. So I'll expect him to check behind here. Okay, cool. Adamo could be betting here to get value from hand like eights or sevens, or maybe hand like six, seven suited here. Uh, afraid that Nick would check behind. On the other hand, it's pretty nice to just check here and try and check call, right? You're also a little bit afraid of other hands uh, having gotten there. So I could see a Nick having a hand like King Queen of Hearts and now having a flush. So Nick doesn't make the thin value bet, which saves him thirty plus thousand dollars. King Nine suited is close. You can do all three. You could uh, use all three options here: call, three bet, or fold. Three bet bluff is a fine play, especially with antis out there. Uh, so we see another cold call against three bets. Not the greatest play. Easy bet for Luke. You know, Gas Trader could have a hand like tens plus, but usually he would just four bet, and so your your kicker is good as well. I'd like to see uh, see him bet again. Your hand is just qu quite valuable here with the king nine. Maybe if you had a hand like nines, so you'd want to check behind and trap, but I think a bet is good. Now, this would be a sick value bet if you can make it, but with the flush getting there, you know, if Gastria had pocket jacks, well, I mean, he was already winning, so nice play by, uh, by Lucas. Good play.